Here's a few quick ways to make your life just a little bit easier when writing GDScript. First up, let's talk about the terminal. On its own, the print command can be a little bare bones as there's no styling or even spacing between multiple output arguments, but you do have some options for improving your text-based adventures. For instance, using the command prints rather than print will automatically space your arguments apart in the terminal. But if you need a bit more style, you can use print rich to incorporate a subset of BB code tags into your output. Not that platform support does vary, so while you may sometimes find this useful or even just fun, if you're trying to monitor what's happening in your application, you may find push warning and push error to be more useful. As the names imply, these functions let you add your own custom warnings and errors to Godot's built-in debugger and see exactly where that call was made, making them a great choice for doing things like monitoring if a value goes out of the expected range or if an expected bit of data is missing and so on. Next up, let's talk about a few quick and simple ways you can make your code easier to work with. As you probably know, exported properties are a pretty big deal in Godot, but rather than just dump all of your variables into one long list via simple export annotations, you can instead organize your exports into logical partitions. Export category can be placed above exports to put those that follow under the same banner, while export group and export subgroup let you make collapsible groups of exports. Furthermore, you can add helpful documentation to your exports by using documentation comments. While documentation comments can be helpful in general for helping you to auto-generate documentation, if you place them immediately above an exported property, that comment will also be available in the inspector when you hover over that property. Furthermore, some basic styling is supported, letting you customize how the information is presented just a little bit. While we're talking about comment formatting, there are additional small helpers to break up the monotony of gray text in your code. For instance, there are special keywords that will automatically have a color applied to them in the code editor if they appear in a comment, and these colors are configurable in the editor settings. Or maybe you prefer to collapse code you don't currently need and the default collapse options aren't enough. With code regions, you can create your own custom blocks of code that can be collapsed regardless of what's in them, these can be manually placed by using the region and end region keywords in your comments, or by selecting a group of text, right-clicking it, and creating a region. Be aware that this is a Godot editor exclusive, however, so if you like to use an external editor from time to time, this won't help you there. Lastly, here's a few shortcuts I like to use that you might find handy as well. Firstly, if you've got a class that you want to know more about, you can control click on it to immediately open the help docs for that class right in the editor. This same technique also works on your own variables or functions to immediately hop to where they've been defined, assuming it's either in the same script or you've got your variables typed correctly so that Godot knows what you're looking for. Similarly, if you want to make an onReady variable without having to type things out by hand, you can control drag it into your code from the inspector and have the declaration written for you. And lastly, this is more of a code shortcut than an editor shortcut, but I use it often enough that I think it's worth mentioning here. When dealing with dictionaries where you may not always have the exact data you expect, rather than either risking trying to read a key that doesn't exist and throwing an error, or checking for the key before reading from it, you can use the get method to return the value for that entry if it exists, or return a default value of your choosing if not. This of course assumes that there is a default value that's suitable here, but that's going to be game specific. And that's a few small ways to improve your workflows in GDScript, but there's plenty that I've not mentioned here, so feel free to throw your own down in the comments. 